Hi guys, welcome to my Solo Prestige Nightfall run of Sabbath and Song. I'm doing it on the Titan. I've got Arc subclass on, so I'm using Striker. I've got Top Tree of the subclass, Pulse Grenade and Rally Barricade. I'm using Strafe Lift as a jump. Weapons I'm using are Better Devils, Arc Mananen and the Darcy All Masterwork. And I'm using the Insurmountable Skull Fort for the Shoulder Charge Regeneration and health regeneration on charged melee kills. So uh, the modifiers I'm using is Arc Singe, Heavyweight and Momentum. I never put Extinguish on because you will 99% of the time die at the Double Shriekers. So there's no point in having it on. This is my first run of the Prestige Nightfall and Sabbath and Song since the Five of Swords scorecard came out. I wasn't recording the last time it came out. I it took about two or three weeks off and so I completely missed it, but it, it's not very difficult. I'm doing it with the Darcy because I pref I just thought it might be better with the ranged attack as opposed to up close or even rockets, which, to be fair, you can mess with rockets. So I'm using the Darcy. Now, the key encounters for this Nightfall Strike is the center room with the two ogres. From the moment you pick up the, the orb, from the, the second orb you pick up from the Shriekers where the two wizards are, and then the boss. There are some kind of fiddly encounters before that, especially for a soloist, but they are the key encounters. So, in this first bit, you're basically, this, this is just your introduction to the strike, I think. So, you take out the wizard as soon as you come in to this open area, and then I position myself behind the left-hand pillar uh, to take out the, the thrall, and then the next wizard, and then when the two knights and the acolytes drop in, I go over to the staircase, I try and take the two knights as fast as possible, and then just work on the acolytes and the exploders. If the exploders start running towards the door, you know you've took all the, the, the acolytes out. They will run towards the door when there's no more acolytes. Uh, so, but normally you get to take out all the exploders before you take out all the acolytes. I think it just so happened that some of them had enough of running face first into my my mananin, so they they done the off. The nightfall specific reward that's dropping this week is the duty bound the auto rifle, and it's a pretty good auto rifle. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that are going to want to get it. Now this is a, a solo guide. Speed running this, you can, I mean, it's viable. I mean, it can be done. I, I'm just not. I don't think I'm going to do one this week. Last week. I put a lot of time and effort into doing multiple runs when, I mean, the best way to speed run anything is with a team. So there are strategies that I will explain at the time where if you had a team, I mean, if you had a team here, you would be, you'd be almost finished this area. So it's, I'd done a run with two other guys and we'd done it sub 10 minutes, about just, just about nine minutes, just under nine minutes. It's a really easy strike to do with a team. So as you can see, we've took we've took the wizard out. We're now over on the staircase. I take out both the knights as soon as I can, so that I'm not having to worry about, you know, stray boomer shots or, you know, and then we just work on the ads. Once you clear this section, you're going to utilize your shoulder charge and the insmoke skull for it. When you activate the door, it will activate two waves of thrall which can be taken out almost instantly with the shoulder charge. If, if you proc your shoulder charge and just keep running against the door, you'll keep it propped. As soon as it opens, shoulder charge will kill all the thrall from the first section. Turn around, run backwards, proc it again, turn around, and shoulder charge the next wave. You'll be left with one punch needed for the yellow bar, the, the major the major acolyte. And then I come out of the room, snipe the ogre, snipe the two knights, and you're through to the next section. Pre pretty standard. Each section is pretty standard, and if you if you allocate these jobs to different members of your fire team, you can really you can melt this 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 nightfall. So as you can see, we're going to proc. We're proc my shoulder charge. I actually messed it up by reloading while I was procing, but it's no bother. Just run around in a circle, get it procced, hit the door, keep sprinting, and bang. Turn around, proc it again, and hit the next wave. And as you can see, one punch needed, and that's them all done. Make it through the first room at the second to activate the door, and then go back out. And s I put an, I put a grenade for the for for the thrall, uh, and then just snipe the 
snipe the, the ogre from back here. And then you're left free to snipe the the two knights. And that's this section. It's, it, there's nothing really too difficult here. The next real encounter, you will have four kind of major acolytes. But the next major section is the the encounter with the, the wizard and the orb. And you have to slam the orb. That can be tricky if you just gung-ho. If you just, oh, I'll just grab this and go and you'll die. The, the shrieker, uh, all the shriekers are just melters. The reason I don't have extinguish on is because, as I say, 99% of the time you'll die at the double shriekers just before you get to the boss. So, but if you do it right, as long as you slam, you'll get the checkpoint, which actually saves you time. It spawns you right up at the wizards. This, after we take out these majors, the next section, the kind of idea is take out all the acolytes, then take the wizard. Once you know all the acolytes and the wizards are, wizard are down, Run up the stairs, take the orb, and then there's like pillars. They're not really pillars. They're kind of like they look like blast shields. Or you get behind one one of those, throw a grenade on top of where the knights and the the knight and the acolytes, because there's a knight and two acolytes that spawn, and then a third acolyte spawns. You take those out from there, and then you go all the way back down the stairs, drop the orb, check with your I check with my mananum, check make sure there's nothing still there. And you should get a free run if you're back far enough with it to the, the Shrieker. If not, the same sort of pillar blast shield as you've got them left and right just before the Shrieker. Run up to that. If he starts shooting at you or the Shrieker starts shooting at you, just wait behind there till he stops shooting and then go and slam. Easy peasy. And that's this section. As I say, I mean... I haven't done this strike since, since and I, I'm just looking, you know, I was looking when I was doing this, and I was like, oh man, I remember there used to be anomalies up there. <laughs> it's how long I haven't done Sabbath and Songing. I tried, this was about eight, I was eight runs deep when I'd done this, this one. And this was my first run with the Darcy, because I'd done six or seven runs with the Rocket. And Rockets, they, they do do decent damage. It's just not a repeatable strategy for me. It, there was too many times where rockets would miss, or you were getting hit. So you, you know, it's just not not a viable option to use use rockets for for me. A linear fusion rifle. If you're with a team, rockets are fine. But a linear fusion rifle or the Darcy are much better. So as you can see, we've took everything out. And was that far back? I always try and keep myself in cover when I'm running towards the shrieker, and the shrieker won't activate till you slam. In which case, it's too late. It can't kill you. Now you're through to the the next kind of... There's a mini kind of encounter. It's just a hive knight and I think five acolytes or six acolytes. Then you're in the first key encounter, which is the, the room with the two ogres. Bit of, bit of prep for this area. There'll only be one ogre in the room when you get in. The second ogre doesn't spawn till the first ogre's down. In the whole room, all you have to kill... To activate the next section of the two ogres. And that's what we're going to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to run past the first ogre. All the way to the staircase. Uh, around the back area where the second ogre spawns. And we're going to jump up on top of the, the rooftop. It's just round to the left as you run round. We're going to put a heap of damage on the first ogre. Until he's nearly dead. Then we're going to reload the Darcy. Put a blast barricade up. A rally barricade sorry. Throw a grenade on the first ogre, which we know is going to kill him because he's got next to nothing. And be aiming at the position the second ogre is going to spawn into. And we're going to try, not spawn kill him, but kill him in the area he spawns. Because he will try and run away until you take half his health away and then he will come back. And with the Darcy, that's very quick. With obviously uh, the heavy, heavy modifier on. So as you can see, we've got into the room. We've run all the way around here to the left. Run right round to the left, jump up, you jump up on that kind of plant pot thing, and then up onto this building here. There's a ridge you can grab a hold of and then jump up and round. This is where you're going to take both ogres from. So we're going to put a couple of shots on this ogre until uh, until we know that, you know, I, I've put a grenade. I want to I want to activate him so he can come out. Make sure the grenade is stopped. And as you can see, if I was to hit him again, he'd be dead. So make sure you've got full health. So get your momentum to proc. 
you've reloaded Darcy, put down your blast barricade facing the second ogre, and then put a grenade back on him, go over to your blast barricade and make sure you've got it right, and just take him out there. As long as you take him, take a couple of shots on him to start with, he'll come back. He won't run all the way down the stairs. If he does make it down the stairs, it makes it more difficult. And then that's that section clear. Very quick, comparatively, compared to compared to fighting all the ads. So what I do here is I take out two of those so that I can run into the room because the, sometimes the two red bar arc-shielded knights will follow you up there. If you're still in that first room, they'll just they'll start mailing you from behind. So take you you've got you've got momentum propped, you're all good. Take the two acolytes from in here and then shoot the crystals and then you're through to the next section, which I as I said is another key encounter. So the kind of thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna attack up the two wizards, the knight and the acolytes that are actually at the orb that we need to pick up. Now I don't kill them all with my super because for some re <clears throat> for some reason the the wizards never took any damage from my first super slam, uh, and I think it was just because they weren't active. So I managed to take uh, uh, the thrall out, some acolytes, and one of the wizards uh, with my super, and that's 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 good enough because until until the the orb is in play. Until the orb is in play, nothing will spawn down in this area. So this is a safe zone. So we can take the knight and the, the wizard that's left up from down here. And as you can see, typical hive running away and hiding. So this is part one of this key, this key section. The second part is actually inside the building. So we're going to use the Darcy for any shielded yellow bar knights. Once we pick the orb up, where I'm standing now, we're going to put a grenade at the top of these stairs, which will take all the ac all the thrall, shoot the two exploders, which will activate the first yellow bar major shielded knight. Take him out with the Darcy, clear the two other two acolytes, clear the acolytes inside, take the next knight. It's one shot from the Darcy. There's three ogres inside the room. It's one shot for each. You can take them from the top section. You'll see me do it in the video. Make sure that the room with the shriekers in it is clear. And then run to the, the the pillar on the. I always go left. You'll have propped momentum, so you'll you'll have your health. And wait for the right hand shrieker to stop shooting. As soon as as soon as that stops shooting, go and slam. You will die, but as long as you slam and it kills the two shriekers, even if you're dead, you will get the checkpoint. That will then spawn you a couple of seconds forward. To, at, at the two nights before you drop down into the exploders cat cave the dark exploder cave now as you can see I, I managed the I know a lot of people don't do this but I I have always I've always managed the orb so I take it with me and just keep making sure I pick it up before it disappears that was quite funny this part actually, because I'd never seen an acolyte suicide himself with his own grenade so I know I'm gonna get tons of heavy it's worthwhile just taking those acolytes out really quickly uh, and that's that section clear. Now we're on to the ogre section. So just prop your momentum again. And take out take out the the ogres and the acolytes. Now, you have to be careful. Even though you're, you're kind of safe up here, the acolytes will throw their flame grenades up here and they will do a lot of damage. So as you can see, we take that ogre there and then we take the ogre that's way back in the back of the room. We know we've got one ogre left. Now we're just going to work on the acolytes. And... I actually try to take the ogre really quickly here and as you can see just getting too much damage so I, I get out of there prop my momentum again gives me a chance to pick up that heavy ammo and then back to it so you can do this a bit you can as you can see you can do it leisurely it's not you're not in a rush you know but if you had a fire team obviously all these would be down one person would run into the room, the aggro, the shriekers, and the, the other guy would go and slam. And and that takes us to the boss. And the boss of this 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 uh, nightfall is the easiest part of the nightfall. Because there's like two positions you will you will fight from for the whole nightfall. You know, you'll be running backwards and forwards to different places, but for attacking the shrieker and the wizards, there's two positions. So, obviously, you'll see me in those positions. 
what the first position is when you, as soon as you go in the room, there's a channel to the left, and then there's like an archway to the right, and then the shriekers in front of you. You're going to fight them in these first two positions from the channel on the left. Then you're going to attack the ads, the ads that come out, the knights and the, the acolytes. You're going to attack them with the super. The key to getting the, the shrieker active again is to kill those two knights. And normally what I try and do is kill the acolytes and leave one knight up so I can make sure all the ads are dead before I, I reactivate the shrieker. But he never moved out in my aftermath, so my super killed everything, which actually worked well. When the, when the Shrieker reactivates, he'll go from the right to the center. You then go up to the right, right underneath where he mo where he's moved from. And you can do nearly all, all the rest of the fight from there. So as you can see in the video, I've got behind there, got behind that p pillar. The right-hand Shrieker stopped shooting at me. As soon as he stopped, I ran out and slammed. It killed me, but as you've seen on the screen, it came up with a checkpoint. So I will respawn at the next checkpoint. So I've actually saved myself a bit of time by spawning all the way up here. I've got two grenades. I'm going to put a grenade on each of these wizards. And then I'm going to make it run right past them. Because there's a bit of cover in this room. Because if you try and kill them with a anything but a heavy, uh, you know, a big kind of area effect weapon. A rocket or a shotgun or a linear. You're going to die if you stay in that room. Even the Darcy won't be able to kill them fast enough. So it doesn't take very long to do that. I don't need heavy, so I'm not going to kill any of the exploders. I'm going to make it through the exploder room. And then that's us at the boss. And as I say, the boss is probably the most straightforward, simple part of this, this whole strike. We'll attack from the left-hand channel to start with. And when, when he moves from mid to right, you will then get uh, throw. But because of the, the damage that the Darcy can do, I just, I just kept, I, I, I reloaded and just kept firing at them on the right hand side. To get the exploders to disappear, just shoot the crystal. Once you shoot the crystal, they'll all kind of run away. And we're going to try and get as many shots on him as possible here, till he runs away. And as soon as he runs away, we reload, readjust, and attack him on the right. He will then go immune. You've got thrall. I, try, I take some of the thrall out with shoulder charge, because obviously that gives me health back, and... I'll just keep getting shoulder charge. And then w once I'm comfortable in my positioning, I will then go and attack the ads with my super. Like I say, the, the, the key is the two knights. I always I always aim to take out one at any way. So, but I was, uh, <laughs> suppose you could say I was lucky that this knight actually just kind of, you know, he died from the super. And then we go underneath where the where the where the the shriek has come from, and behind this pillar is the next glitch. It's like a head glitch spot, because we'd done so much damage to him when he was at the center to start with. That's why he just opened and closed straight away. The thing about being here that you need to be mindful of is you are going to get thrall coming up. Now there are going to be a couple of waves. I think there's three or four waves of thrall. So you just put some damage on this boss when when he's all the way up there. And that makes him immune and brings out the kind of the last big wave of ads, which is the three ogres. You can attack them from here as well. Now you can stay here right up until uh, it's six and a half a dozen. You can stay here right up until you need to go and grab the orb after you kill the wizard. Or you can go to the final position, which is roughly the same position we started in. To, to kill the wizard and that will be the last position you take before you slam the orb so it's it works both ways uh i i think the way i do it is once i've cleared the ads made sure all the ads are down because when i'm when i'm trying to shoot the wizards and do all that i don't want to be getting bombs thrown at me you know acolytes charging around at me so i try and make sure they're all dead before i kill the last ogre when you kill the last ogre that's probably worth mentioning the key to reactivating the 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 key to reactivating the shrieker are the three ogres once you kill all the ogres you'll reactivate the shrieker and if you haven't killed all the the acolytes you'll have to deal with the shrieker and the acolytes the shrieker is in his most dangerous uh this is his most dangerous time 
when he goes back to the center because he will now start shooting axiom darts at you. Now, you'll see what I do to counter that. You can shoot them, or it's probably simple just to run about and wait for them to just, you know, he'll, they'll fi he'll fire one wave at you. Even if he's dead, even if you've made him immune and go to his final, his fi his, his final but one, the one, the position before his very final position, even if you've made him go there, those axiom darts will track you, and they will kill you. So as you can see, we've took the orc out. We're now aiming at his... The the shriek, and you'll see when he's going to fire those axing darts, he kind of lights up. You see him lighting up, and that's those axing darts coming at you. So what I do is I just run, I go through this this uh, archway because I know they're following me, but I'm proking my momentum all the time. Uh, and now now the kind of plan is we're going to get into our last, our final this 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 final place. This is where we're going to attack all the wizards from. All the wizards are going to be attacked from this position. Because once you take down the main wizard, then you're going to have two red bar shielded, just normal wizards to deal with. Uh, and you'll take down the first wizard. That will that will that will uh, that will bring the orb into play. Once you pick the orb up, two wizards will spawn left and right of 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 the the shrieker. You need to take them out before you go and slam because you'll have the Shrieker shooting at you and you'll have the Wizards. They'll just melt you. They will. It's a, it's a proper melt. So once you take down this yellow bar Wizard, it's gone. You can go and pick the orb up and then come back to that position. Now you'll see I've got two two kind of on the left and the right. I've got pillars left and right that I can, I can attack the Wizards from and make sure I can take them in relative safety. So when you're in the right hand side, you can shoot the left hand Wizard and Vice versa, when you're on the left, you shoot the right. And that is it. Once you get up there and slam, turn round, the, the Shrieker will appear in the centre, and you put a couple of shots on him, and he's dead. And that is the run, guys. Uh, as I say, I've done the tight of the Hunter run. The Hunter run's a little bit faster than the Titan run, so I will post that tonight sometime. I hope you've enjoyed the run. I, I've enjoyed making the video. Uh, if you like the video, leave it a like. If you've got any questions, leave a comment. Thank you very much for your viewership and I will see you guys in the next video. We did it. We couldn't have done it without Taiko and the other Guardians. Let's get back to command. Zavala and Sloan need to know about all of this.